welcome to this video and as you can see we're going to be looking at this Daniel Smith's 12 set although it does have some extra pans and I want to use those extra pans to create a tonal value set now these colours uh, the muted to some extent which is good that's what i want so let us open the box and have a look at what's inside by the way on, on the actual box there's quite a bit of interesting information you get all your colors and all that sort of stuff but uh, we'll take a detailed look at these things so let's just put this box to one side and here we have the uh, actual palette or box or whatever you want to call it now the first thing I see about this is that um, the tray itself is a uh, a matte finish black just just to compare it i've got a bigger one here and look how uh, gloss finish that whereas this is matte and i like that actually so first impressions we've also got the daniel smith logo on it just flip it over it's um, one that has a ring for holding and let's open that up and pull that out two separate sections for the um, you get this with it to protect it you get you actually get three separate sections Uh, in this because obviously like many of these they actually pull out that centre bit pulls out you've got mixing space mixing space and if I can get it out more mixing space I don't tend to use that in in these kind of things but uh, there you go that's the internal section of it comes with this um, perspex information sheet with bits of detail on it you can't see it because it's not focusing but uh, we'll put that in a file out of the way so like I said it it comes with these colors we'll take a look at those and do a swatch but the the main purpose of this video is what I'm going to put in these and uh, they're going to be very muted grey tones these paints are uh, and poured into the half pans and that's what I'll be doing with uh, the bottom row of uh, the paints that I put in but as you can see it, with watercolour paints you always have the problem of not being able to really see what the real colour is although Daniel Smith do provide the um, this perspex thing with lots of details in um there's only so much you can do with printing and it, it's not as accurate as doing a real swatch out so that's what i've done so let's look in detail at this swatch so 
what have we got color wise we've got cadmium yellow medium u quinacquinone rose wisteria rose of ultramarine moon glow shadow violet phthalo blue green shade lavender cascade green serpentine genuine green appetite genuine and quinacridone gold now all of these are rated as one light fast which is excellent apart from wisteria which is one down from it too light fast if you want to call it that and that's good so with regard to light fastness that's a really good set what we need to look at next is our what you would call primary colors although it's not a normal primary we've got the yellow that would act as your red and your blue will be your halo although it would be skewed towards the cooler color the interesting thing about this set is that it only has four single pigment colors in it they being quin rose and phthalo blue and the two primatech colors that are in it the serpentine genuine and the green appetite genuine now you might think oh I, I want to have single pigments but in this particular case where we're building a tonal uh, set it works to our advantage to have more uh, pigments and colours mixed up together because that will make it a lot easier to neutralise things and make grey tones so the rest of them all work very hard to help with that grey kind of feel that we're wanting to get out of these paints what I will say for the overall set I think it's well suited to um, landscape especially this area um, florals would be really good with these uh, you can do some really nice poppies on that and various other that is actually a, a, a flower isn't it uh, wisteria so yeah there's some very landscape stroke floral feel to this and you've got strong other colors that will complement that let's see how well the colors neutralize and i'll use cadmium yellow and if you think about it it's not red and it's not blue so what do they make purple so that's the nearest we've got to purple uh, rose of ultramarine so we'll mix these two together uh, in balanced amounts and hopefully that should kind of neutralize let's uh, get some yellow and activate it and these paints actually activate really nicely all of them so I'm going to put that in there nice splodge of um, and uh, Rosa Ultramarine which I believe is this one now I think you've got to be a bit careful with this because it can be a bit a bit frisky let's get that there and see what happens Let's 
see if I can get that a little bit darker a bit more there you go so it has neutralized to some extent it's a uh, I don't know what color you call that yet let's just uh, see if we can make a, a line from uh, to the So although the colour intensity has not gone down particularly, it's, there's a, a nice colour come out of that. I'm just wondering whether some feel or blue green shade might make a difference. Well, it's, it's made it So it's, it's things like that where two colours uh, are fighting against one another. In that case it's the cad yellow versus the rose of ultramarine. And it gives you another tonal value and, and another colour. But in, in this case obviously that should go to there. But again you get another tonal value and a, a newer colour so they're quite versatile these colours and you can do lots of these things let's just do one more um, example so I'll get a bit more yellow I'll use that rose of ultramarine again to get that then I'm going to go for one at darker greens these we get tonal feel to that one so that's the basic premise of, of this particular arrangement but uh, we're going to make it even more tonal by adding various other colours that can neutralise all these and uh, some colours that are already grey in the natural environment anyway and hopefully we can get some nice grey tonal value paintings before we move on to the bottom row where we're going to put as grey values and things like that in I just want to make some adjustments to this top row now what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to take out this one not that there's anything wrong with it and notice you just pull that back and it comes out very easily that will be going in my grey tones and that's the shadow violet which is if you look it's quite dark that So that will be going in there, uh, not specifically there, but that will be going in the bottom row, in the darker area up here somewhere. I'll just put that to one side. So what we're now going to do is shift these up. Now 
tighten this one here up a little bit. Now what am I going to put in place there? This is a nice colour but I want a bit more strength in the red area. So what I'm going to do is put this in which is a quinacridone coral which is a slightly more orangey red than what this one is let's search watch that out here i'll move this out of the way so we've got space and uh, I'll do a, a brief swatching. So if you if you look at that, that's much more red vibrant, although it does go into a a mellow pinky colour. So I think that will benefit uh, this top row much more and like I said the other ones are going to go in there as one of the grayscales so that's the only alteration I make on that for my customized set so in the next part we're going to look at putting this bottom row together okay I've had a look at my colors that I want to put on the second row there's uh, one or two slight differences I want to put this, um, is it Veridite Blue uh, up in the blue colours. Uh, as such, that means I've had to move me Queen Gold down into the bottom row. And I'd already moved this Shadow Violet down in to the bottom to make room for the red up at the top so let's have a look at what we've got we've got buff titanium which is like an off-white grey titanium queen gold permantite uh, genuine if that's how you spell it tiger's eye to remind myself how I, I pronounce this as well imitite genuine shadow violet and up here we've got that blue verdata blue is it Sodalite Genuine Graphite Grey Neutral Tint Van Dyke Brown and the darkest colour in the Daniel Smith's range Indigo which is a blue so I'll put all these into uh, pans obviously these will get cut up these will need to be put in and dried out so once I've done that we'll do a swatch of all these colours apart from that one and that one which we've already done as you can see now we've got the second row done and we'll put that now in uh, back into the case so a few days to dry uh, the ones that are from the tubes still setting a bit but it can take up to a week to dry out and there only two or three days in to that so there you go that's that's the uh, entire palette completed with the originals 
and uh, 10 new colours because obviously I put this one in and took that out and put that one in and I've replaced this one here uh, and put one of these here I think it's that one so that left me with 10 and we're going to have a look at what these are you can't really see them when they're like that so let's have a look at a swatch that, were, that I've done uh, of this bottom row let's first look at the two colours that we've moved up to the top row they are uh, quinacrinone coral which is a, a nice red although it's still on the bluey end of things it's slightly more towards the red than uh, what we've got here up here uh, in the quinacrinone rose and then we've got this introduction of uh, this colour Verdata blue and that's going to go in between these two apparently looking at the pigment information it's a cross between cobalt blue and cerulean blue so that should be a good workhorse blue really that okay let's look at the bottom row and I'm starting with the lightest colour which is a buff titanium uh, a very creamy off white with a hint of very light yellow and uh, it's country cousin uh, grey titanium which is much more grey as the name shows uh, both are going to be very good for doing the very light tones and then we come to this one which we've already discussed that's moved down from the top row which were part of the original set uh, quinacridone gold pimentite genuine will work very well as a a muted tone for a red it's, it has a very strong purpley uh, value at the top and it fades off into a very nice uh, pinky red and then we get hematite genuine which is really interesting it's got lots of very interesting granulation uh, a darkish blue with a, an undertone of uh, like a creamy pinky red undertone that creates a lot of uh, granulation and as it gets down to the bottom it fades off into a grey and in uh, this one soda light genuine that's a very nice grey blue that again fades off into a a nice grey moving on to tiger's eye this is a light brown again slightly granular uh, which fades off into a, a nice again light um, browny colour graphite grey has a very strong mass tone and it it comes down very nicely uh, into a medium grey and it goes all the way down to a, a very nice light tone here uh, shadow violet is another one of the colours that I moved down from the original set and again it's a, a dark tone that uh, fades off 
into a, a nice light grey and then we get to neutral tint which is a, a very dark uh, almost black that uh, again fades off right down into a, a nice light grey Van Dyke Brown is a very dark and in its mass tone it's very dark uh, in its mid tone it's it's um, quite it's fairly light that for a mid tone and then it comes down to this area where it's almost invisible um, that'll do for one of the colours that you use to mix very dark tones and the last but not least the darkest colour that's in the entire set uh, indigo which is a ve extremely dark blue, blue. and uh, it's very strong as well it takes a long time to get down to the point where it's starting to fade away uh, and it eventually gets down to a light grey so they are the colours I'm not going to go into too much detail with that because these are additional colours that I've added to the set but you can make your own colour set up um, with the grey tones that you feel are appropriate for you and uh, I'd love to see and what you think about these and what you put in place of any of these and uh, what I will do in a video coming after this is do a painting using these colours to um, create a, a, a nice tonal value painting so at this stage I hope you've enjoyed having a quick look at this palette and uh, how I've been able to extend it and learn a little bit about tonal values so thank you for having a look in today and we'll see you soon on another video bye for now